Um, okay. Mispronounce this. Amo. Why, why did I even use this word? Uh, <laughs> a myotrophic lateral sclerosis, it's called. And it's what everyone says put and keeps Stephen Hawking in that wheelchair. But you know, it kind of looks like he's being squashed and twisted, pushed down and smashed around by a giant thumb, squished and held in that chair by that giant thumb, pressing down and grinding out. Maybe that thumb belongs to the universe. Can't kill him outright because of some cosmic reason beyond our reckoning. So every day, the universe incrementally erases Stephen Hawking constantly cigarette butt into an ashtraying him because he is figuring out its secrets. <laughs> okay, so here's another one about an unpoetic subject. Um, something y'all could do and I'd, I'd like to promote is instead of taking pictures of the food you're about to eat, um, and post it on Facebook. I think people should post their injuries, and I think that'd be a lot more interesting, personal. Uh, this is called Skin Pop. Underneath my truck, pulling apart crimped together wires and soldering them up like I should have the first time, I can't figure out where to place my arm. So when I reach up to complete my inexpert work, Bits of molten solder drip down into my inside elbow. Spectacular shining metal sticks and burns. My skin smokes and swells up into a blister, popping loud enough for me to hear. Tomorrow I'll stand in front of my class, looking like an IV drug user with a nasty abscess. <laughs> That's why Joe's one of the heroes. He can write poetry and work on cars. It's like Gary Snyder. He was a poet and a carpenter. Uh, I have figured out what's, what's wrong with the whole universe, and here it is. I have figured out exactly why the world isn't working, why everything is the way everything is. I read somewhere that A.A. A. Milne took his son Christopher along to Canada on a lecture tour and Christopher Robin took Pooh and Eeyore and Piglet and Kanga and Rue. Somewhere in there, the hotel rooms, the bookshops, the train stations, the restaurants, somewhere along the way, Rue went missing. Until we turn Canada upside down, until we look on every shelf, in every antique store, between all the couch cushions, in every hotel lobby, under every bed, until we get that little stuffed toy back into Kanga's empty stuffed toy pouch until we find Rue, the world isn't balanced, the world won't work. Ouch, talk about loss. That hurts, that still hurts. That actually does bother me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand that. Yeah, it's gonna bother me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. oh, this is a David kind of poem. So, um, just briefly, y'all know Mojo candles, right? Like you can buy them everywhere now. Uh, you used to have to go like to Green and White Grocery over on Seventh Street. But uh, you know, they're for saints and work and law stay away and all those good things. So Crawdad Creek is the name of this poem. Crawdad Creek is full of empty mojo candles. Seven African powers, St. Jude patron of lost causes, supplications for Thurbajo. We throw rocks towards the good side of good luck, sink pebbles into the hollow of dinero. Not trying to break anything, really. Just how stone and glass and creek bed, eyeball, hand grip, arm mark, the very air. Uh, so everybody's familiar with Jack in the Box, right? The guy with the thing. Okay. Kathy and I are watching TV 
dogs and cats on carpet and couch here and there around the room, sitcoms and commercials, ginger ale and popcorn. Somewhere in there, we are talking about those jack-in-the-box commercials and whether or not the actor wears the same big ping pong ball head over and over again and they just stick different Velcro mouths and eyes on it to change the facial expressions or is there a room somewhere, and I hope this is the truth, where there are maybe 10 or 12 different big ping pong ball heads sitting on shelves, one smiling, one puzzled, one angry, one non-committal, sitting on shelves in the dark, all ready for the next commercial. <laughs> <laughs> this one's about some kind of recent weather. Bastrop, Travis, Caldwell, and Lee. Sounds like a law firm. But really, the names of counties waiting on a tornado, says the TV weatherman. I'm in Travis, looking out the window, looking at the TV. They always say it sounded just like a train when they are interviewed after, standing beside their couch and some kids' toys in the front yard. A train that doesn't stop to pick you up, just picks you up without stopping. A train without tracks, all engine and no cars, no conductor, a runaway. Tornado warning expires at 4 p.m., says the TV guy. But the big train doesn't care about the warning. This train makes its own schedule. Bastrop, Travis, Caldwell, and Lee. Yeah. So, um, it's a little longer one, I apologize. But uh, I participated in the Fuse Box, Fest, Fuse Box Festival, and they had, I don't know how many of us, seven or, no, probably 10 people, and we all wrote about the 100-year flood. And this was back in um, April, when it was Fuse Box. No, it was April, because we were out of town. Um, and you could go down to, there's a mark on, Long Labored Lake, and you could use the QR code and hear poems. It was really uh, advanced. But uh, here's mine on paper. It's called God Willing and the Creek Don't Rise. <clears throat> Looking out at a river that's stuck between two dams but can't escape time's rolling. To the east, there's a marker at least 20 feet above where you're sitting now. In 2001, we'd have seen it we'd have been in over our heads. Today, February 26, 2015, it's 44 degrees, and the vista is a study in gray, black, and white. Square cement frames, strong bridge beams, the water silent, dark, and deep. The only birds here are coots, subtle black and gray, piddle puddle paddling in the smooth black river. White beaks give them away, these not yet ducks, Lobed toes with not quite webs, concentric wheels inside them connect legs and necks so they can't swim without bobbing their heads. Listen, if it is a sunny day, warm day, as it probably will be when you're hearing this, on the brown path behind you, running shoes will crunch along, bicycles will lay down a snap crackle pop track, all-terrain baby strollers will eat up the trail. Side-by-side -side moms converse over babies who stand one in chance in 68 of ending up on the autism spectrum, one in 42 if they are boys, one in 1,000 of extra chromosomes for Down syndrome, one in 100 if their moms are over 40 when they are born, 93 chances in 100 of making it to five years old. And the cyclists, if they ride their bikes for transportation, can expect 373 run-ins with cars every year. And the runners may have heart attacks, 278 per 100,000, or breast cancer from one woman in eight, or Alzheimer's for one in nine by 70 years old. Those statistics tell us too that healthy living and regular exercise can increase our lifespans by up to 29%. As of March 1st, 2015, one in six people living in Texas will reach 100 years old. Actuaries in black hoods on high stools in hidden rooms run trismegistic algorithms to promise us these things. In less than 35,064 days, they assure us anyone standing on this spot will be deeply underwater. If you are alive on that day, Please remember this poem. 
Until then, may your chances be considered ones. May you slip between statistics. May you live unencumbered by arbitrary numbers. Thank you. Between Ohio and Texas a few years ago, I eavesdropped on two women sitting behind me. One of the women, in what I would learn was a Venezuelan accent, was telling how she had saved money for years, working part-time and raising children, to travel from her home in Caracas to New York City to see Frank Sinatra in concert at Carnegie Hall. It had been a dream of hers for a long time. She said she had a flight book and a concert seat reserved, a good seat but not great, and was ready to go, just her, without her husband, and because of the expense, packed to go at the end of the week, when she heard on the news that Frank Sinatra had died. She said the story was that he had died after a show from a heart attack at Carnegie Hall backstage. The woman started to quietly cry telling this part of the story. She said she got all her money back, but her heart was broken. She never got to see Sinatra in concert, never got to touch the sleeve of his tuxedo jacket after the show, maybe. I found out later, telling friends about the woman's story, that Frank Sinatra hadn't performed for two years before he died, that he had died from a heart attack, but it was in Los Angeles, in the emergency room of a hospital, not backstage in New York. I was, and still am, confused. Was the Venezuelan woman making the whole thing up? Did she have the wrong, world-famous, legendary crooner? Did Frank Sinatra die twice, once in each of two separate realities? She couldn't have had tickets, couldn't have made those plans, couldn't have missed seeing him by only a few days. When she heard he had died, he had already been very sick, hadn't been on stage for a long, long time. She was really sad, crying, telling the story about missing a Sinatra concert that never was. Yeah. Great story. Man. Um, oh, here's a, so, um, another lie, kind of thing. Inspired by a street sign in Houston and in sonnet form, though you um, can't really tell from the way I read it. We discuss sonnets in class. You remember how to tell a sonnet? <laughs> I won't put you on the spot. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> um, okay, so Buffalo Speedway, Houston, Texas, 1979. Then never before two or three in the morning, we'd take out our adolescent angst and our parents' Vista Cruisers, the state wagons, safaris, our own Novas, Ramblers, Darts, maybe Mustangs. No, we were not the coolest. We knew our rides were lame. But we'd found the weedy tunnel that got us into the pits of the late great and abandoned Buffalo Speedway. Those cars we drove, mostly powered by a basic six. Attempts at racing were beyond pointless. It was just about gathering the herd, thundering round and round relentless, raising dust on that half mile oval's dirt until somebody crashed or we ran out of gas. David does beautiful paintings of buffaloes, by the way, too. So you can imagine buffaloes running around and around the racetrack as well. Dust. <laughs> 